All right, good morning, everybody. We made it through our investigation. That means we are back on lessons. Get ready for lesson 81, reducing fractions, part one. So when you reduce a fraction, what you're actually doing is making the smallest equivalent fraction by dividing by a fraction equal to one. We talked about making equivalent fractions a few lessons ago where we were multiplying by a fraction equal to one. We're just doing it in reverse and now we are dividing by a fraction equal to one. That means the numerator and the denominator have to be the same number. And the big thing I wanna point out is when you reduce fractions, you're still gonna leave an equivalent equal fraction. If I had 6 eighths and I divide it both the numerator and the denominator by 2, it reduces down to 3 fourths. But 3 fourths and 6 eighths truly are equal equivalent fractions. So the way you go about reducing fractions is you can reduce fractions to the lowest terms by dividing the numerator and denominator by their greatest common factor, the largest number that's a factor of both the numerator and the denominator. So if I was trying to reduce 5 tenths, well, my factors of 5 are just 5 and 1, right? 5 times 1. My factors of 10, the denominator, are 10 times 1, and five times two. The greatest common factor that I have in both rows would be five. Five is the greatest common factor of five and 10. Now, I also have one as a common factor, but you wouldn't want to divide by one because that's not going to change at all. So if I was trying to reduce five tenths and I realized that five is the greatest common factor for both of these numbers. I then go and divide numerator divided by numerator. Five divided by five is one. And then denominator divided by denominator. 10 divided by five is two. So five tenths reduces down to one half. So just a heads up from this lesson onward, any fraction answer that can be simplified or reduced must be simplified or reduced. And what we mean by that, if you had an answer like 12 eighths, well, simplified normally means write the answer as a mixed number. I divide 8 into 12 one time, multiply it back and subtract for 4. So I'd have a fraction answer now was 1 and 4 eighths. But Four eighths can also be reduced. I could divide both four and eight by four. Four divided by four is one. Eight divided by four is two. So I don't want to write my answer one and four eighths. My answer when it's reduced into the lowest terms would really be one and a half. So we're going to start off right now with some problems like this. Reduce the fraction 6 eighths by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 2. Easy enough, so they're even telling you what number to divide by, right? Numerator divided by numerator. 6 divided by 2. Hey, that's going to give me 3. 8 divided by 2, denominator divided by denominator would be 4. 6 eighths and 3 fourths are equivalent fractions, but 3 fourths is in the lowest terms. Here we have one reduce the fraction 3 ninths by dividing both the numerator and the denominator by 3. So I'm going to divide the numerator by 3. I'm going to divide the denominator by 3, right? 3 divided by 3, hey, that's 1. Denominator divided by denominator, 9 divided by 3, 
That's going to give me 3. 3 ninths and 1 third are equivalent equal fractions. So now to put it into play, we're going to have to add, subtract, or multiply, and remember to reduce your answer. So starting off with 2 fifths times 1 half, I'm going to go 2 times 1 is 2, 5 times 2 is 10, but I cannot leave my answer here just as 2 tenths. What number can I divide both 2 and 10 by? If you're not sure, you could set out your factors, but hopefully you know you could divide them both by 2, couldn't you? So I'm going to divide the numerator by 2. I'm also going to divide the denominator by 2. Numerator divided by numerator. 2 divided by 2. Hey, that's going to give me 1, won't it? Denominator divided by denominator. 10 divided by 2. That's going to give me 5. So... If I leave an answer as an unreduced fraction from here on out, it will get marked wrong. You have to reduce it down to its lowest terms. Let's try over here. 3 eighths plus 1 eighth. Well, 3 plus 1, that's going to give me 4. And when I add and subtract fractions, I don't add the denominator, right? If I'm adding eighths, it's going to stay ace. So I have four ace right now. What is the biggest number I could divide both four and eight by? Hopefully you're not going to fall in the trap and think it's two again. The biggest one would be four. And we'll talk more about that in part two. So now that I'm ready to go, Numerator divided by numerator. 4 divided by 4. That's going to give me 1. And denominator divided by denominator. 8 divided by 4. That is 2. 4 ace equals 1 half. Hopefully we should have known that one, right? Check out these. Write each mixed number with a reduced fraction. And the thing to remember here is reduce the fraction, leave the whole number as it is. So let's take a look at 6 tenths. What number can I divide into both 6 and 10? They're both even, so I can divide them both by 2, right? Numerator divided by numerator, 6 divided by 2, Hey, that's going to give me 3. Denominator divided by denominator, 10 divided by 2. Hey, that's 5. But I started with a mixed number, so let's bring the whole number of 7 over. Don't forget to do that. Don't leave the answer just plain old 3 fifths. Let's try it again down here. 3 and 5 fifteenths. I reduce only the fraction, leave the whole number as it is. So I just got to think, what can I divide into both 5 and 15? Well, they both end in 5, so I can go and divide them both by 5, right? Divide by a fraction equal to 1. Numerator divided by numerator. 5 divided by 5. That's going to give me 1. Denominator divided by denominator. 15 divided by 5. Hey, that's 3. But don't just leave the answer as 1 third. Bring the whole number over. So if I started with 3 and 5 fifteenths, when it's all reduced, I'm going to have 3 and 1 third. Reduce the fraction, leave the whole number as it is. Check out this one, a little change of pace. Which of these fractions can't be reduced? So if we take a look here at our first one, 4 tenths, they are both even numbers. 
So that means I could divide them both at least by 2, right? 3 fifteenths, if you remember your divisibility rules, you could divide them both by 3 because 1 plus 5 equals 6. 4 sixteenths, hey, I could divide 4 sixteenths by dividing both sides by 4. So the one that can't be reduced would be 2 fifths. There is no number other than 1 that I could divide into both 2 and 5. All right, just a couple more here. Find each sum or difference of these mixed numbers. Remember to reduce your answers. So I'm going to just start off with the fraction side. 5 twelfths minus 1 twelfth, that equals 4 twelfths, right? On my whole number side, pretty easy. 5 minus 1, that equals 4. But from here on out, I always want to look at my fraction and think, can I reduce this any lower? What is the greatest number I can divide into both 4 and 12? Hopefully you know it's going to be 4. Don't fall in the trap and think that it's only 2. That would have left you 2, 6, and I could have still divided that lower, right? Okay, 4 divided by 4, that's going to give me... 1. Denominator divided by denominator, 12 divided by 4, that's going to give me 3. And I'm almost there, but I have to remember to bring my whole number over to the answer. So if I had 4 for a whole number, I'm just going to bring it over for a final answer of 4 and 1 third. Let's try one more like this. 3 and 4 25ths plus 2 and 1 25th. So I'm going to start off just on my fraction side. 4 25ths plus 1 25th. That's going to give me 5 25ths. Over to the whole number side, 3 plus 2. That equals 5. But that's not my final answer. i got to stop and think. Can I reduce... 5 25ths. What is the biggest number I can divide into both 5 and 25? If you remember your divisibility rules, that answer is going to be 5. So, numerator divided by numerator. 5 divided by 5, that is 1. Denominator divided by denominator, 25 divided by 5, that's going to give you 5. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Don't forget to bring your whole number over. All you have to do, it's that easy, and it gives me a final answer of 5 and 1 fifth. All right, that is the end. You are definitely going to want some scratch paper, maybe a multiplication chart for your Socrative quiz. Go slow, go careful, and good luck.